four principal DML operations in databases are CRUD, which stands for Create, Read, Update, and Delete. The four operations translate into Insert, Select, Update, and Delete in SQL. But do we really need four? Couldn't we get by with three by combining Create and Update? You can with an Upsert. An Upsert is like an Insert when you don't pass anything in as a primary key which is usually a number generated by a database that uniquely identifies the record. No primary key means the record doesn't exist, and so it gets inserted. If you do pass in a primary key, the database sees that and then executes an update statement. This can potentially cut the number of queries in your database by 25%. Less code means less to maintain. We're going to look at how to create an upsert in SQL Server 2017. This technique should work on older as well as future versions of SQL Server. In fact, this technique works on all databases provided the database supports stored procedures. When we implement, you'll see that we use stored procedures to contain the logic for our upsert. If you've never seen a stored proc before, I highly suggest learning about them. They make your database operations much faster owing to the fact that a stored proc is pre-compiled with an optimized execution plan. Another neat side effect is that they make it much harder to perform a SQL injection hack in your web applications. Let's switch over to SQL Server Management Studio. It's a pretty common structure for a user table. It has field names for first and last name, email, and a primary key simply called ID. I have a constraint on the email field that requires it to be unique, and all of the fields are required to have data in them. This isn't strictly necessary, but we're gonna build an insert and an update, and it's not a terrible idea to develop these queries in isolation, even though for this example, they are trivial. So here's my insert statement. I'll run it, then do a SELECT to verify it worked. It did. Now let's try an update. I'll just change the three field values to make sure all three work as expected. Another SELECT statement will verify that. Now we have two working SQL statements, one for the insert and one for the update. Let's combine them into an upsert. Let's create a new stored procedure. I'll add the proc's name. Next, I'll add in a set of parameters. These are like arguments to a function. If you're new to SQL Server, they must all begin with an at symbol. My first parameter, ID, has a default value of zero. This is how I'll decide whether to run an insert or an update. If it's a zero, we'll insert. If a number greater than zero is passed in, we'll do an update. Now for the logic. We start with an if statement, which detects whether the user ID is greater than zero. If it is, we'll copy our update statement we made earlier and change the hard-coded values into our parameters. I'll add an else statement and then do the same thing with insert. I'll run the create procedure script and then refresh the list of stored procedures.
and I can see it was created. Now it's time to test it. I'll right click the stored procedure and select execute. I'll fill in some values for a new user and set the user ID to zero. I'll run it. Now I'll verify it worked with a select. It did. Now let's test the update. I'll just change a few things on the exec statement that's running our proc. I'll add the generated database ID from our earlier insert, which should trigger the logic in our proc to execute this as an update. I'll run this and verify it with a select once more. Our upsert works. The upsert technique has been around for a long time, but it seems like a lot of people don't know about it. And if you're completely self-taught like I am, you may not have run into these before. I use stored procedures for everything in my professional applications, and it's not uncommon to have hundreds of procs in a large application. The upsert technique makes that number more manageable by eliminating the need to write four queries for CRUD operations, and it's also fun to whiteboard at parties. Wow, I should probably attend better parties. If you found value in this video, if you learned something new, help me out with a like and subscribe. For more videos on software development and DevOps from a developer's perspective, check us out at maddevskills.com or on Twitter at devskills. If you want the code for our upsert, check out my GitHub account. I'll post the link in the video description.